Major underwriting for A Taste of Louisiana with Chef John Foles was provided by the Baton Rouge Convention and Visitors Bureau. In Baton Rouge, our past is your present. Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. And People's Drug Stores, serving South Louisiana for generations. George and Shirley Piku are proud supporters of A Taste of Louisiana with Chef John Foles. And by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. And by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Where you have this architecture, history, music. And the bittersweet cry of the blues. Especially the blues. There you go. How about a dozen? Red beans and rice. We rolling, y'all. We're a nation of immigrants, a country with roots in other soils. Nowhere is that more true than in the country of Louisiana. I'm Chef John Falls, inviting you to tune in to A Taste of Louisiana and a new series dedicated to our food heritage. Louisianians are descendants of seven primary nations that have influenced every dish we cook today. Welcome to A Taste of Louisiana. All right, how y'all doing, guys? All right, my man, yo. Hey, mama, how you doing? All right, guys, y'all great. <laughs> how y'all doing? All right. <laughs> uh, Bobby Lonero, y'all right here, Bobby, huh? <laughs> y'all, y'all, hey, I knew this audience was full of Italians today because everybody genuflected before you went into your pew. <laughs> Huh? I knew it. <laughs> anyway, it's so great to have a house full of Italians as we continue to celebrate the unique cultures and cuisines that make Louisiana the most sought after spot in the world for visitors. And I want to thank all of you for being so excited today and also being so your faces are lit up and, and you light mine up as well. We're cooking great Italian food today and we have a great kitchen of good guests. So y'all just sit back, relax. Uh, have fun, and I'm 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 cooking uh, I'm cooking bruschelone for you. Okay, yeah, I bet I bet. Huh? <laughs> the Italians came to America with nothing, but it wasn't long before these hardworking Sicilians were making good in Louisiana. They started in the cane fields, worked in the strawberry fields, became truck farmers, and ultimately made a huge impact as entrepreneurs in Louisiana's food industry. They were grocers, they were restaurateurs and importers of produce and fruit, but their contributions didn't stop there. Joe Maselli continues the story of Louisiana's Italian population. What a great one. The Sicilians worked hard to make good in America. While most started out as laborers on sugar plantations, it wasn't long before they owned their own land. By the late 1880s, many became strawberry farmers in Tangibahoa Parish and built that industry into the largest money-making business in the parish. By 1904, Italians shipped about 275 carloads of strawberries to the market worth about a half a million dollars. By 1905, Independence, Louisiana was known as the Blue Ribbon Strawberry Shipper of Louisiana and the Little Italy of the South. Ice manufacturing companies and banks grew from the success of the strawberry industry, as did the Italian Macaroni Manufacturing Company and factories such as Star and Enterprise Canning. Many Italian immigrants became entrepreneurs and small business owners in the food industry, especially the grocery business. By the 1920s, 49% of the grocery stores in New Orleans were Italian owned. They were like all the other immigrants, whether they were Irish, French, German, or whatever, they went to work. They were, most of them were in the grocery business. In this city, they had 624 Italian groceries here as late as 1944. By 1913, Italians dominated the businesses through which 73 million tons of produce were exported to Latin America. The Italians established a network amongst themselves of food peddlers and small grocers. 
they dominated the Creole food empire, including truck farms and the labor supply. Wholesale and grocery retail was also under their control. They established bakeries, ice dealerships, restaurants, coffee shops, ice cream parlors, delicatessens, and candy shops. They owned the fruit stands and the fish markets. As the trucks were produced were coming to the market here in New Orleans, sometimes stuff would fall off the truck. And these people would set up a stand on the side of the road and sell fruit and vegetables on the side of the road and pick up another 50 cents or a dollar a day. The Italians handled the majority of the fruit trade with Central America and South America, which by 1920 was valued at $700 million. Nicholas Cusimano opened the Cusimano Brokerage Company, a wholesale dealership and brokerage firm for domestic and tropical vegetables and fruit. Like the banana business was started here by the D'Antoni Vaccaro family. The Progresso Food Company was started here by the Udo Taramina family and many other national entities as well as major groups were started here. In 1861, J.B. Solari founded a grocery store that featured a large lunch counter, a delicatessen with gourmet foods, a candy kitchen, and a liquor store. Still in existence today is Angelo Bracato's Italian ice cream parlor and pastry shop and Sam Cartese's Roman chewing candy wagon, which still peddles candy along the streets of New Orleans. Another prosperous Sicilian businessman was Antonio Mutlion, who arrived in 1880. Within just eight years, he bought a 14-room commercial hotel. The Mutlion Hotel became one of the finest and largest in the South and still operates today. Another important Italian immigrant of note is Angelo Socolo, the father of the Louisiana rice industry. Because of his research, the industry grew to a harvest of more than a million sacks a year. And what would New Orleans be without Dominic Nick LaRocca, the cornet player who led the original Dixieland Jazz Band, bringing national and international acclaim to this incredible music. But maybe even more importantly, LaRocca composed Tiger Rag One Step, Louisiana State University's famous fight song. Less than 100 years after their immigration, Italians moved from the lower to the middle and even upper economic classes of society. Without a doubt, these Sicilian businessmen not only influenced Louisiana's food empire, they made it thrive. Didn't I tell you? That not tell you one of the greatest cultures. When we think of food in Louisiana, we think of the French and the Spanish and the Germans, the Italians, the Native Americans, the Africans, the English. Joe, the Italians up right up at the top, no doubt about it. <laughs> uh, and uh, and what, amaz what amazes me, they, they came here about 100 years ago. And, you know, a, a little bit more than 100 years ago. And they came with nothing but because of family, because of work ethic, because of ambition. Look at the success of the Italians. I always like to use them when I talk to young people about don't blame anything on anybody. Just get out there and make it happen. The world's your opportunity, and the Italians are a great example of it. So thank you all for being here. A couple of great people with us in the kitchen today that you all all have to know. First of all, Bobby Lanero, my band. Thank you so much, Bobby. Huh? Why don't you uh, introduce the band to us? On my left, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard him uh, singing the break for French and after stuff, Mr. Duke Duplantis. Great, great talent. <laughs> on the drums, played without hurt for 30 years, and I'm so happy he's with the group now, Mr. Reed Vaughn on the drums. <laughs> Mr. J Mr. Jimmy Chandler on the bass, and also he's played with all the great legends of New Orleans. Mr. Jimmy Chandler on the bass one time. <laughs> And one of the finest talents in New Orleans on keyboard and vocals, and also he does a lot of other stuff, but we will tell you about that later on. Mr. Rich Ladner, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> inducted into the Louisiana Hall of Fame. <laughs> and my partner in crime here, my goombody, one of the greatest I've ever heard in my life, saxophone players, and I'm so glad. He's, we've been growing up together like, like this. We were playing together, and we're still playing together. 
Mr. Johnny Panino on the table. All right. <laughs> All right, y'all. And, and, and I don't have to tell you the great music we're going to hear today. And a couple of other great guests in the kitchen. Uh, well, first of all, let's just start right here. Frank and his mother, Phyllis Frasina from Frasina's Pasta Shop. Huh? Nice to have you. I say, I, I, it has a better name than Frasina's Pasta Shop. Just, that's just what I call it. I'm family. <laughs> huh? And then right next to him, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, Joe Maselli. You know, we just met Joe. Andrew Capone, another historian talking about uh, Italian. <laughs> and then... Finally, on the end, two special people here, Corey and Scott Bibin. They built my kitchen, y'all. Look how beautiful it is. <laughs> I'm gonna ask uh, I'm gonna ask them a question about a kitchen in a little while. But y'all, let's start cooking because what oh, what oh, Italian cuisine? What do I cook? Well, spaghetti and meatballs. Uh, uh, I decided I was gonna do a good bruschetta, bruschetta, mm -hmm. and I'm always confused. So nice, save me a piece, please. <laughs> I will. I'm gonna save you a piece. Uh, the difference between uh, somebody was telling me bruschetta or bruschetta, and I and thank y'all. I told you told me this morning one was veal, and one was round steak. I'm doing bruschetta. Here's the round steak. Take a look at this, y'all. I have me a nice round steak sitting here, uh, and and the things that go into it multitudes. People do all different things. I'm gonna put pine nuts. I'm going to put garlic. I'm going to put onions. I'm going to put uh, 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 some raisins in it. I'm going to put eggs in it. I'm going to tie Italian sausage in the sauce. And I have one already pounded out. I want to uh, show you how we stuff it. It's uh, you, you, First of all, you use a little hammer like this. I could be in the band <laughs> over there. So, you know, you just kind of get all of the, the meat pounded out nicely, season it beautifully like this, a little salt and a little pepper. And I'm going to put a little onions down in here, a little celery, all of these wonderful things. And look, the, I, I don't know if that's a recipe for this dish or not. Every Italian family cooks it a little bit differently. I'm putting some olives, pine nuts goes into one of the great basil dishes, as you know. Raisins, because of grape growing, because of preserving fruit and all of that, raisins were part of the Italian menu. Parmesan Reggiano. The good Parmesan cheese here, y'all. Bread crumbs went into it as well. And then, of course, every, some, some of you put eggs in it? Huh? Oh, I bet you do, huh? Uh, so anyway, I'm going to put eggs in it as well. Now, y'all, all I have to do at this point, I can roll it up. I normally roll it up the long way like this. I use a piece of a wax paper sometimes, too, because the wax paper will really allow it to hold together nicely. Of course, you want to tie it. Some people stitch it, but I like to tie it together. Uh, some people will use uh, uh, toothpicks or something like that to hold. Just come all the way down. And y'all, I have one already cooking in the pot here. And Joe, while this thing's frying nice and brown here, what, what experience did the Italians bring here with them to have the knowledge to start all of these businesses? Because it didn't take them any time. Did they have any knowledge or they just got out there and made it happen? Poor people make things happen. Poor people make things happen, huh? The, the, the old, if there's a will, there's a way, is what you say. But they came here with absolutely nothing, and they controlled the produce business. I mean, they were great gardeners. They, they ran some of the best farms uh, in Louisiana. They knew how to make it, but yet the French in New Orleans were starving to death, and the Germans and Italians had to bail them out. What did they bring with them that gave them a knowledge of such farming? Work ethic. Just again, just good work ethic, getting out into the fields and making it happen. So hey, I guess that's what it's all about, right? No matter who you are, just making it happen. Y'all, I have my uh, bruschalone all nice and brown here. Oh, is it beautiful? Now use your, use your own sauce. You know, uh, everybody makes their own sauce. Some makes it light, some make it very thick. I actually take my little onion, celery, bell pepper, garlic, fresh plum tomatoes, San Marzano. I like a lot the Italian plums. The canned tomatoes are better than fresh tomatoes if they're out of season. Always use them. So I made my sauce. I'm going to put it right on top the bruschetta like this. Oh, I know what you mean. I'm going to put my Italian sausage on top of it like this. I'll cook my Italian sausage. You can put it in raw. You can put it in in lengths. This is going to go into a 350 degree oven and it's going to cook for about an hour and a half to two hours depending on how cheap your round steak was. 
You know what I'm talking about? This is what it looks like when it's done right here, y'all. Absolutely a beautiful piece of meat, all stuffed on the inside. It's great and sitting on top of that pasta right there. It's wonderful. I'll, I'll give y'all a taste in a minute. Y'all, cooking great Italian food does not have to be complicated. It's, uh, you know, they keep it simple. Terrific ingredients, a little ingenuity, and pasta makes for a masterpiece. Phyllis Frasina of Frasina's Pasta Shop in Baton Rouge gave us a lesson in cooking one of the very simple pasta dishes that was magnificent. Let me tell you, magnificent. Y'all, I am so excited today because I'm in my absolute favorite pasta shop in all of Louisiana. I'm in Frasina's Gourmet Pasta Shop here in Baton Rouge. It's a wonderful Italian grocery store, a wonderful Italian gourmet store. They bring in all ingredients directly from Italy. And I'm sitting here with the, the leader of this organization, Mama Frasina Phyllis. It's so nice to be in the shop. Thank you so much for uh, sharing another recipe with me. Thank you, John, for having us here. Now, now, now how long have y'all been, uh, been here in this shop? Uh, uh, approximately 15 years in this area. Now, even the pasta machine uh, started out in Italy. That is correct. It came to uh, Louisiana, uh, New Orleans. New Orleans. <laughs> Went to Independence, correct. Louisiana, and then finally came home here. So this machine is 70 years old. Right. Just absolutely fantastic. Now, let's go ahead. We're going to cook some pasta. We're gonna, what, what today makes, we're cooking linguine. Linguine. And tell me, what makes uh, your pasta cook so much fast. Every time I buy it, it cooks like in two or three minutes. Because it's fresh and it's made with the semolina number one and all we're adding to our pasta is our Baton Rouge water. Look right. here how gorgeous this is. Okay, gonna now you're going to take the linguine. All right, we're going to take this. Oh my God, look how beautiful. And we're just going to pull it apart and I'm going to pull it apart and we're going to put it in the pot. A little lightly salted water and that's only going to take water. a minute. Now look, I'm going to make mine. I'm going to start the sauce here. Very simple. Right. Most pasta sauces are, are very simple unless it's right. a cooked tomato sauce, right? Right. So I'm, I'm putting my oil in here right. and um, I'm going to get that going. Now you have some beautiful garlic. Garlic, right? chopped garlic. So I'm going to put the garlic down fresh. into my... Oh, fre oh, always fresh. Always fresh. fresh. Stir fresh. it up. Stir that a little bit. Oh, I'm going to stir that. So you want to get that... Get that kind of getting the garlic sauteed quickly. Right, right. And then some beautiful flat leaf uh, parsley. Parsley, right. Now, now this isn't a cilantro or one of those. No, this is good Italian part, parsley. parsley. Okay, I'm gonna throw that in there. And you're gonna stir that and up And I'm gonna a stir bit. that a little bit. Oh, this is cooking good. How's our pasta coming? It's good? almost there. Okay, now I have here some gorgonzola. Gorgonzola cheese. And the gorgonzola goes in there too. Right in there, you're gonna melt it. It's oh, gonna it's just gonna, melt it. Ah, it's gonna, oh, and that's gonna melt very. As soon as that's melted, you're gonna add Add the uh, artichoke Well, it's melted already, so uh, I'm going to the throw artich chopped artichokes right. going into it. And oh, this, I tell you. And this pasta is ready. We're going to add the cold water Good. to it. And the cold water is going to make it stop cooking. Stop cooking. Now, how many different types That's of pasta y'all make here? Uh, we make approximately 18 to 20 different shapes. And stuff. 18 to 20 we different We also ones. make whole wheat pasta now. We uh -huh. make spelt, people that can't have wheat. Right, now I'm going to take this because I know it's hot. I'm going to just drain the water drain out. It's out. all ready to go, right? Right, it's ready to go. I'm going to just shake that water out. Right. And I'm going to put it into my pot and mix it with this really quick little cook that we did here. I'm going to just kind of put it down. There oh, you go. that's it. <laughs> and that's, that's it. That's and uh, y'all, I tell you what, I wish that you were here with me in Baton Rouge at Frasina's because Mama Frasina and I are going to put a little Parmesan Reggiano on this and the rest is good eating. Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you, that. Appreciate it so much. Woo, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, hey, y'all, hey, any, any better than this, I, I don't know what club you'd go to to get this right here. What great music at the hand of one of the greatest Italians, Nick LaRocca. Now, I'm, now I say LaRocca, what are you saying? La Rocca. La Rocca. La Rocca. La Rocca. Nick La Y'all make sure we say Nick La Rocca. Pasta machine, and, and now you, own, you make your pasta only with water only with and water. semolina. Water and semolina, and actually it's the aquifer water here in Baton Rouge, which is the natural filtered well water, which is the finest water on earth. And, and Phyllis, I, I, you heard I said simplicity just now with the, the pasta. That was absolutely fantastic. Is that a dish that you make uh, for Buster, your husband over there, and for the kids? Or? 
Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> if he's good. Yeah. Uh, they got to be real good. Now, now, when you cook a tomato sauce, that, that whole thing took about five minutes to make it. But That's when you make it. an actual pasta with a tomato sauce, how long uh, it takes? No, nah, that, that takes a couple of hours. Takes a couple of hours. Well, hey, I'm going to come for this one because uh, uh, <laughs> why don't we eat this one while waiting for the tomato sauce to cook? Huh? That'd be great. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, y'all, what are we going to cook here? Now, my second dish for you. Oh, the Italians brought to Louisiana uh, a knowledge of making these wonderful cream-based soups a lot, because of course there's a lot of dairy in, in, in that uh, industry, in, in the, the culture as well, and of course vegetables, so they would have put a lot of things into the pot like, like I'm doing here today. Bell peppers, three different color bell peppers roasted in, and Keith, I want you to take a look at my roasting technique here. I've taken a yellow bell pepper, and I've put it onto the fire like this, and you can see what it looks like. It's totally black, that's the skin burned off. You see the steam? I would put it, I'd do this side the same way, and then put it into a paper bag for about 15 minutes, and then wash the black skin right off of the outside, and it looks just like this when it's done. It's just totally, uh, totally finished. So let me show you, I'm gonna make a quick soup here. Into my olive oil and a little bit butter here, I'm gonna put my onions, celery, bell pepper. This is a great, great, great uh, soup. And Andrew, while I'm putting in the onion, celery, bell pepper, and garlic, I want garlic, right? Huh? Y'all want more garlic than that? Oh, that's about enough, huh? Uh, Andrew, what about this great Italian network coming up and down Bayou Lafourche with the Italian, Italian uh, uh, produce vendors filling up the, the neighborhood grocery stores? Right, yeah. John, when the Italians came in, my great-grandfather, Lorenzo Castle, came in about 1858, and uh, he actually had 14 boats going up and down Bayou Lafourche. And they went out into, uh, all the way down Bayou Lafourche into the Gulf, and they started with, uh, with shrimp, oysters, and he noticed that they had citrus farms all along the bayou, and so he started bringing the citrus in. And so the Italians just needed an opportunity to get businesses started. You know, and, the, and the minute he saw these developing businesses, he said, oh, I, can, I can be a, a broker or a distributor to right. them. And he, he would broker to the different uh, uh, grocery stores and, and small vendors, the, the peddlers that went in, in wagons and so on along the dirt roads. Well, I can think of no town in Louisiana that didn't have tons of Italian grocery stores and somebody needed to fill up the shelves and that's a good example of how it happened. Y'all, I have my red bell pepper in here. I have my green bell pepper in here, all nice and toasted. I have my yellow bell pepper and of course you can use just one and if you use the red, it'll make this soup nice and red. You bring it to a good simmer here, and then I'm gonna add just a little bit stock to it. You can puree this if you wish, uh, and then of course there's gonna be no substance in it, it'll just be a beautiful full flavored soup, but I'm gonna add some tasso from Louisiana because the culture shared ingredients. So tasso was from the Spanish and the Cajuns. They gotta put andouille or smoked sausage into here as well, and I would let this simmer for just a little while I have to ask Corey a question. You built this beautiful kitchen here. When you build cabinets and kitchens like this, give me two things that people are asking for today in kitchens. And uh, more and more people want old style cabinets, but even though they want old style cabinets, they want new modern appliances. A lot more of the new commercial style appliances like you have here. Yeah, so stoves facing the, the company and the family with stools out here because kitchen is theater. And then of course the great equipment, but traditional look of uh, the area of the country you're in. That's fantastic. Y'all, I would let this cook. This is gonna cook for about 20 minutes. Heavy whipping cream. Oh yeah, heavy whipping cream. Where does the starch come from? You can add a little flour to it if you want, but the peppers will thicken it nicely when you robo coop it right here with the little blender, and you can blend it all. Look at what it looks like when it's all said and done right here. Take a look at that. Oh. You talk about beer, yeah, you can smell that garlic already. And uh, y'all, one other thing I want to show you, the canola is back here, and if y'all good, you get a canola, okay? And here they are right here, y'all. All great uh, Italian dishes from the great Italian cultures. Y'all, time flies when you're enjoying great food and good conversation with friends in the kitchen. Thanks for stopping by as we continue to explore our unique food heritage and cook up another great taste of Louisiana. <laughs>
To purchase the Encyclopedia of Cajun and Creole Cuisine by Chef John Foles, featuring more than 750 traditional recipes, a CD-ROM of the book, or a copy of the program featuring all three episodes of Today's Culture, call the number on your screen. Major underwriting for A Taste of Louisiana with Chef John Foles was provided by the Baton Rouge Convention and Visitors Bureau. In Baton Rouge, our past is your present. Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. And People's Drug Stores, serving South Louisiana for generations. George and Shirley Piku are proud supporters of A Taste of Louisiana with Chef John Foles and by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. And by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Where you have this architecture, history, music, and the bittersweet cry of the blues. Especially the blues. There you go. How about a dozen? Red beans and rice. We rolling, y'all.